If you are just tuning in and you're new to the channel, hit that subscription button. I do have an Instagram page. The link to that is down below. Follow along with real-time updates on this tank and my nano tank. Also, if you support this channel, hit that thumbs up. Enjoy. Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, I'll be adding 10 pounds of Miracle Mud into my newly established system. The cycle finished on this tank just over two months ago. I brought back my two clownfish from my previous system. If you missed that video, I'll leave a link to that below in the description. In addition to my two clownfish, I also added two skunk shrimp, one fire shrimp, along with the typical cleanup crew members. As an addition to the cleanup crew members, I also added a couple of sea hair slugs and a couple of sea urchins to help fend off some green hair algae that I'll talk about in a future video. The most recent additions to this system is this ultra rose bubble tip anemone I picked up from my local fish store. It's been in the tank for about three weeks and so far my two clowns can give two hoots about it being in the tank. They won't host it. Oh well, this video is about adding Miracle Mud into the system for the first time. Now Miracle Mud is not to be confused with Mineral Mud. This is Ecosystem's Miracle Mud and I cannot speak for any experiences you may have had using the cheaper Mineral Mud version. The reason I went over my stock list with you was to show that I have hardly anything in the tank. I don't have any corals unless you want to consider the anemone a coral, but I don't have any SPS corals. While you can most definitely add Miracle Mud to an already established system, you have a slight advantage to adding it to a newly cycled system. The advantage would be acclimating newly arriving corals and fish to a system already running Miracle Mud. The new corals would simply become adjusted to the water quality versus having an established system where corals already are used to the water quality and suddenly changing it with Miracle Mud being added. Ecosystems, the makers of this particular Miracle Mud, recommends on their website to run the Miracle Mud as early as during the aquarium cycle. They also recommend adding macroalgae two weeks later. Ecosystems also has a chart ratio for the amount of mud to water in your aquarium. The suggestions seem a bit excessive in my opinion. I only ran 5 pounds of mud in my 75 gallon tank while they recommend running 13 pounds. For my 100 gallon, the recommendation is to have 20 pounds of mud while I'm only going to run 10 pounds. The same chart shows the recommended flow rates for your sized aquarium. 10 pounds of mud inside my mud tray gave me about a 2 inch bed of wet miracle mud. They recommend having at least an inch and a half of dry mud inside your container. Now if you've been following me, you know that Zero Edge Aquariums made my sump, but it took them several months to get it to me. Because it took so long, Zero Edge promised me a matching mud tray, which would come later. Well, it took about three months, but the tray did finally arrive. In the meantime, I had given up on Zero Edge Aquariums and was already shopping around for a new mud tray and was in talks with the Acrylic Creations. Acrylic Creations was very receptive and were great at immediately responding back. I will leave Acrylic Creations information down below in the description in the event that you're interested in their products to include making you a custom mud tray like this one. Let's take a look at the mud tray. The mud tray was custom made to fit inside my refugium area. It's made of a quarter inch acrylic and matches my gray and orange overall color theme. The tray has this orange divider consisting of various sized holes. The holes allow for anaerobic organisms to move from one section into the other and also allows for good water flow. The divider has this arch within the arch are three larger holes. The larger holes are finger handles making removing and placing the mud tray into the sump easier. I still do have my old mud tray. The mud tray was made to fit inside my previous Trigger Systems Ruby 36. You can see the older tray was also made to match the color of the ruby sump. I later found out there was one flaw with this design. No handle. So I made sure that the new mud tray had some sort of handle. Alternatively, you can use something like Tupperware to keep your Miracle Mud inside of. I already did do a detailed video on the benefits of using Miracle Mud. I'll leave a link to that video down below in the description. While some will swear by Miracle Mud, others claim they have not seen any difference. The refugium is in the center section of my sump where I already have a ball of chato growing underneath this Kessel H380 light. Phenomenal growth so far by the way. All right, time to prepare the sump for the introduction of the mud. I'm going to try to contain the mud as much as possible to prevent an out of control mud cloud from getting everywhere. To do that, first I'm going to get everything out of my way. That means pushing this Kessel H380 off to the side and temporarily removing the heater from the refugium area. Next, I took the macroalgae out and set that aside inside of a bucket. I turned off all the pumps and allowed the water to settle before starting. 
Here you can see everything inside the container. You can see the texture of the mud inside the container, everything from between small pebbles down to fine mud dust. As I pour the mud into the tray, you can see the dust rising out of the tray. This stuff is very fine. After I poured 10 pounds of mud inside the tray, I took a small bottle filled with aquarium water and poured it over the top of the mud. Then I just mixed the wet mud with the dry mud in an effort to reduce that dust storm inside the sump. I used handfuls of this filter floss and tried to pack it into the area dividing the refugium and the return section of the pump. I found the filter floss to float rather than anchor itself down. This created air pockets for the mud to actually bypass the filter floss. A better option would have been filter pads cut down to size. I'm too far into it, I'm going to keep marching forward with the original plan. Now that the pumps were off, everything was out of my way, and the filter floss was in place, I went ahead and started slowly lowering the tray in. I allowed for some water to slowly pour into the tray, paused for a few seconds, then continued. Eventually, I had the entire mud tray inside the refugium. While the water in the refugium got dark brown, the return section seemed to be okay at this point. I kept the pumps off for about 45 minutes while waiting for the mud cloud in the refugium area to settle. After about 45 minutes, I turned on the Core 20 pump and restored flow into the sump. A small amount of cloudiness did occur in the display tank, but it was not a big deal. Within 60 minutes of turning on the pumps, the anemone reacted to the change in the water. This is the fullest, most extended, and largest I've seen this anemone since I first got them. This stuff is like catnip. There's something about the mud that made this anemone excited. I've seen the same results in my old 75 gallon tank with my previous SPS corals, Zoas, and wall hammer. A couple of hours later, the water in the display tank as well as in the sump were crystal clear and all was well. Yeah.